。哎，我听我看他们都哦，对了，你是那个英文英文对，啊，有英文。So so I have to yeah speak English too yeah sure moderate me yeah. yeah okay. Okay, so it's about the time to start. I think it's a, it's our honor to have a, uh, the professor Guo here, and he's from a, a, a distinguished speaker, uh, the professor and the chair of a, a biomedical uh, engineering department at uh, Columbia University, and his uh, uh, his lab has uh, has been doing a pioneering work. Work in the in the in the bone mechanics and the, the mechanical biology and the microstructural analysis of skeletons and it's a, it's a lot of a kind of pioneering work and it's the first uh, the, the work and the, did a, a lot of contribution in this field and he's a, a fellow of uh, the several a lot of uh, societies and is a is a seniority uh, showing his in seniority in this field. And uh, I think uh, uh, I'm going to give this uh, uh, um, the podium to him right now to talk about his uh, uh, the, the distinguished, very very impressive work on the the bone remodeling. And I think it's a mechanical biology of a skeletal system. Okay, I'm just going to give the uh, the podium to uh, Professor Guo now. Hey, hey, uh, Xiao Du, thanks very much. Thanks, my good friend. And good good night and uh, good evening and good night and good morning. Uh, it's good to uh, see many of friends uh, over year. I remember last year in August, I was really have a good time uh, with host of uh, Cao Xu and others in Xinjiang. And uh, hopefully we can overcome this pandemic and uh, get over with this one soon. Uh, so today I'm going to talk and providing some really. Uh, a uh, new data we have looking at uh, bone modeling and remodeling in response to mechanical loading. Uh, yeah, but the one. So, uh, so therefore, the bone is actually very ancient uh, organs. Uh, so starting from fish, you actually have bones. And then when the fish crawl to the land, uh, become us, and then there's a lot of process because you know you have more gravities and it goes through from the primates to humans. And then the bone supply is very important. So evolution is not complete, and because the evolution is not complete, it's getting us in a lot of trouble. And the one of the trouble, of course, is bone loss in osteoporosis. You can see, you know, those are the structure, you know, loss of bones and uh, spine fractures in here. And then on the other hand, you may start in with uh, loss of bone first, and uh, then you're getting a lot of bones. You actually have bone gains in osteoarthritis, which is not good either. So I think these are all due to we human beings in uh, you know several million years of evolution to standing up still have a lot of uh, challenging work to do and then a lot of the lab actually it's interesting this i think in the country not in the lot in the country in the world probably there are thousands of uh, uh, pis and the students are working on this problem is really fascinating how to mechanic loading creating a biological response such that bone can change its size and shape to meet the function needs, right? So the mechanism. So this is a very example. You see the uh, professional baseball player, and then one the uh, compares the long dominant arm with the throwing arm. So this one's in here, and then you see the uh, just dramatic difference between the uh, dominant arm with uh, the non dominant arm, and then the bone mass is bigger, and uh, the the thickness of cortical bone is uh, also much much thicker, and they have a lot of bones in here. So it's very, very fascinating. And those are done by the work people know a lot more now. I think, uh, you know, the, in the audience probably, they, uh, I'm pretty sure there are experts in this, much more than I do, is uh, done by cells. And uh, one of the way one will have a lot of attention is actually osteocytes. They are permanent cells in the bones, and then they are the sensing, mechanical sensing cells. So a lot of biology involved in there. And then they organize to actually making controls of osteoblasts, that's a bone forming cells. So if you need to gain bones, that's where they need to uh, form. And then they come from the mesenchymal uh, stem cell lineage. And then the osteoclast is also controlled by osteocytes. And then they are bone resorbing cells and change the shape. They come from the uh, microphage lineage. I think we're going to really testing 
very uh, uh, some uh, preliminary hypothesis in today's talk. And interestingly, osteocytes also control these mo most important bone proteins uh, in the in the body. Uh, RANKL, which is uh, mostly by osteocytes, it is the major stimulating and differential factors for the uh, uh, differentiation of osteoclasts. And then osteocytes are also producing OPGs, which is a decoy receptor for RANKL, so therefore there is a neutralizing the fact of uh, RANKL, right? And then uh, the most important and the protein is called sclerostin, and this sclerostin is made only by osteocytes, and it's negatively regulated bone mass, and then uh, interestingly, mechanical loading, uh, down-regulating these uh, secretions of uh, sclerostin here. So therefore, you, if you want to make bones, and then you have to have the uh, sclerostin level have to go down. So therefore, that's also very important in the one thing here. I think uh, uh, for the people not familiar with bones, there are two processes to shape or uh, building bones. It's called bone uh, modeling and remodeling. So remodeling is a formation following the resorption at the same locations. Then it normally is in the regular bone maintenance is coupled and usually balanced, but also can become unbalanced. And the modeling is decoupled. And then you can have two types of decoupled. One is uncoupled formation, which we call them anabolic. And another one is uncoupled resorption, is uh, catabolic. And uh, previously people feel it's in growth and development. And then we'll find out in our study, you know, they actually are everywhere. So these are driven by different biological uh, process. And, uh, but these two process, Modeling and uh, remodeling can control the bone mass. Both of them can lead into either volume loss or volume gains through the process here. So you can see on the right side, if I'm just adding bones, you're getting a purely bone gain. Um, and then also if you're just resorbing the bones, that kind of bone loss. And the same thing for the remodeling here. And uh, the, as I said, you know, the, one of the, you know, one of the, Professor, who we know very well, Xu Chao from Johns Hopkins, we really have done some revolution work in this side. He's suggesting that remodeling is governed by osteoclast class related mechanisms released in PJ for beta, and the modeling is related to some pre osteoclast class. It's very interesting, and the reg uh, through the PDG of BB and the coupling with osteogenesis. So, this really uh, got us thinking about. If you want to look at how we can load in forming bones, and we need to look at this uh, process here. And the interesting for the scrotum, right? Scrotum, I say, is very important. Amgen has really made in the progress in here in the past uh, 15 years, I think, you know, more than 15 years now. This is the last year that approved by FDA for the first in class of scrotum with for treating osteoporosis factors, right? So, scrotum is very important in mechanical loading. So, therefore, you can see tons of data. Look at you know how the mechanical loading you know modulation is very important in mechanical loading you know and then and then you can you know see many many work and dancing here and what we're gonna ask interesting thing is Swaston is not the only story I think I just show you one or few examples in here I show you here is one of the studies in here is in unloading so you unload the mechanical unload the limb of the mice. So you, therefore you can see if we compare the control versus the uh, unloading, you can see they actually lost in bones in here. So you can see from here to here. And if we're treating with scrotum, scrotum we reverse the loss of bone and you actually get, it, get it more bones in here. But if we're looking carefully and compare the one, you know, the control one, which is receiving antibody of scrotum, they actually gain much more bones in here. So if you compare, in both and uh, scrotum and antibody treated animals, and then I think the long, long loading effect is still there. So if you compare this arrow versus this arrow, the essentially the same. So therefore, even the scrotum is important, but the scrotum is not the only thing here. So by inspiration of uh, the Xu Chao's work, uh, we feel there is other arm which is a uh, independent of squats, then I would believe it's rank L and OBGs because they control the bone remodeling and the bone remodeling because through the control of, um, because of, you know, because of their work, and then we believe you know, the control both OSI class as well as the pre OSI class, therefore, they become targets here. 
Then the question now is how you study modeling versus remodeling, right? Because I'm talking about modeling is adding bones or removing bones. And then remodeling is removing bone first and then uh, adding bone later. So therefore we go through using animal models, that's first. So this is uh, a mouse tibia model. So therefore we can sub subject them a controlled mechanical loading uh, in, the, in the mouse. And then, uh, then the next one is very important is take through the technology of uh, CT scans, micro CT scans. So these micro CT scans, we scan both legs of the mouse and load it, unload it. And we actually started from the week before any intervention. So you can see starting from minus one, zero, and for uh, one, you know, week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, I just load them. But each week, actually we are scanning in the same animal and through the ones here. And then that's where you can do loading intervention as well as uh, other from suitable intervention. So we're going to show some uh, showing as an example. We also you know inject PTH, look at the combination of candle loading and PTH. So this is the system you, we have, and you can see this mouse is lying there. And then you can scan. You know this is an uh, area in in blue is the trabeculin regions, and uh, and then going down in the yellow regions, and then that's the cortical region. So in one scan, we obtain the information of both trabeculin compartment and cortical compartment. Okay, and then you can select in the trabeculin bones in the uh, proximal tibia, and then so we're studying the response in the trabeculin bone in here. All right, so the key is you have so many of those images, and then the first thing you do is put all the images we call the registration into the same coordinate system. Showing example here from the week zero to week three, and then you're essentially rotating all the images, you know, all into the same global coordinate system. And after they have global coordinate system, actually you can compare each other. You can, sub, you know, essentially compare each other. From if we do the compare, compare with each other, and then you can identify new bone form and also bone loss. And in these pictures in here, the green one is gained bone, and the red one is lost bone. So therefore, that's how you identify the bone gain and bone loss. And if you look at those closely, right, at those uh, individual voxel level, they just look at squares, and that's how we do. Because you have three time points or more, and then you can follow the sequence in here. So showing here is example you identify in the process. You have anabolic modeling. You just adding new bones. You can see there's no bones there, no bones there in the two weeks, and then in the third week you add a new bone, and that bone stay. So therefore we call that one anabolic modeling. And similar in here, you can you know one voxel starting here, and then that one you know one there is gone. So therefore you identify the, the loss of red in there. And then never come back. So therefore, it's a catabolic uh, modeling. And then, if in this particular case in demonstration, you can see the bone was lost, and then after a stop, and then the green one comes back. So that's identified remodeling. You can see the, the resorbed bone has been coupled with uh, bone formation and recovered. Right. This is actually you know you can see one of the examples we have here. And uh, following many weeks, and they see there is a lot of green and a lot of red going on for formation resorption here. And if we look at location here, on top in here, you guys see you know the a trabecular plate surface. I did adding a green new bone to here, and you see here this kind of a raw like a trabecular has been lost forever. And in this process, you can see with resorption, the trabecular becomes smaller, and then the green comes back and recover uh, to the original volume so here. So size is really the technology essential to look at here. So let's look at the one example we have done. So therefore we, you know, load it for five weeks. We look at the zero, one, two, three, four weeks. We're doing loading with one leg and we're giving them PDH. So therefore we can, we can, we can, you know, we can compare one leg with other one to look at how much bang bone is gained. So this is a, a typical, you following the trabecular bone, bone one fraction. And it is a vehicle one and without loading. And then you can see the mouse, even though still four months old, that you begin to loss in bone. Okay, so that's the trajectory loss in bones here. And the modern remodeling analysis is in that window of two and five weeks. And then this is uh, uh, if you apply mechanical loading, you can see the actually significant gaining trabeculate bone volumes in here. And if you add in PTH, and then PTH also can add in a new bones in this process. 
And then if you also combine the PTA to mechanical loading in the plant, they're working in tobacco bone components more synergistically, gaining more bones uh, you know, you know, in either by PTH or uh, by mechanical loading, right? So that's the, the process you have here. And then you can also, you know, can see the process change with time between, you know, zero to one, one to two, two to three. And then let's look at the full week accumulation on the right side. So you can see that's a typical graph that we're going to have, you know, the white one is zero, uh, no load, and the vehicle load, and then PTH in this case, and PTH plus loading. And then this could be other intervention or, you know, genetic models we're using as well. So you can see comparison here. So that's, and then those are volumes we call it the form volume because that's where the loaded limb subtracting the unloaded limb. So that's why we call them form the volume. So you can look at it here. So this is a form of volume uh, in the four week accumulation. You can see there are significantly increase, you know, by mechanical loading, both in the vehicle group as well as the PTH group. You can see there are significant bone grain gains in there, right? And then there is also, you know, you can see compare. The PDH actually, there are also other differences as well, I see here, and then so on. So there's many, many differences that happens in here. And then, but actually, you look at the, the arrows in here, there's not actually no significant load and PDH interaction. You can see here, even the PDH group, the uh, gain in the bone by mechanical load is the same as the one in the uh, no PDH as well. So that's the one process you can look at. And then, if we, we can, uh, you know, the, look at this particular case in the uh, in tobacco one compartment, you can see uh, this case, and then the PTH and then interaction actually is uh, uh, significant. And then, so therefore, you can see here, the arrows in here from the uh, vehicle versus loaded one and the, the PTH with loaded one, you can see the actually the arrow is higher. So therefore, you can see that it not only have added effects, the significant, the synergistic interactions between the mechanic loading and the PTH. And then you can look at other ones as well. All right, and then you can also look at the catabolic modeling as well. So that means the bone loss, you can see the mechanic loading in this particular case in the control group without PTH, there's no significant difference between the mechanic loading. But in the, uh, in the PTH loading group, actually the mechanical loading actually increase the resolved volume of bones. So the, the mechanical loading actually uh, helping the PTH loss in bone in here. So that's, uh, and then, uh, uh, so therefore that's, that, that's actually something kind of intuitive, right? And then if we look at, the, we can also look at the results in the cortical bone. So you look at here, you look at the anabolic modeling, and then you can see both the uh, vehicle loaded one compared to PDH one, they all significantly add more bones in here. Okay, and then seems that there is no induction here. And the interesting thing in the mechanical loading, the cortical bone side, the remodeling is not uh, so much significant. Okay, so there's no significant difference. So therefore, in the gain of a tobacco in cortical bones in here, most of them is come from the modeling perspective. And uh, interestingly, in the catabolic modeling side. The, actually, the also working on the other side as well is on the resorption. So we plotting here is resorbed volume. You can see, look at here, the vehicle low, low load and the vehicle low, they actually mechanical loading reduce the resorption of volume. So therefore, not only any more bones and then also uh, uh, inhibit the resorption that happening here. But uh, when you apply PDH, there actually there's no difference between loading and unloading in here. here. So this is just demonstrating one of the examples so we, we have here. And not only we just look at total, how much uh, cortical bone, how much vacuum have the line, but we can also interesting look at the uh, two surfaces. So one of the surfaces in cortical bone is preosteum, which is outside preosteum. And then another one is on dosteum. In the trabecular, we're gonna look at different plates and rod, and given the time, we're not gonna talking too much about that one today. And we'll focus on uh, the tubercular uh, compartment and cortical compartment. So if you look at here, so this is a lot of work we're going to present in the similar one here. So if you look at the, purely look at the bone formation on the mechanical loading in the preosteum versus endosteum, right? In the antibody modeling, you can both uh, in the uh, preosteum, you have significant bone formation, you respond to mechanical loading, and then you have significant loading uh, in the PTH group as well. And then to the interaction between load and PTH, it means the PTH uh, help the porosity bone formation 
the higher in response to mechanical loading. And then in the on-bus deal, and then there's also differences between loading in the you know low PDH group, and then the PDH group also mechanical loading has significant difference here, but there's no interaction per se in the on-bus steel uh, surface. So that's, that's something slightly different. And uh, if you look at the remodeling in the both periodic surface and then dust surface, both sides it seems the mechanical loading is not that important uh, in, in terms of remodeling. So that's why I think in the most bone formation around the mechanical loading in the mass model is through the anabolic modeling or catabolic uh, uh, modeling, the bone resorption here. All right. And then if you look at the catabolic modeling, it's actually quite interesting, uh, at least in the mouse model, right? So in the preostium, okay, if you apply mechanical loading, and then you can see the resorbed volume is significantly reduced. So therefore, mechanical loading actually inhibit the bone resorption on the preostium surface, okay? And then the mechanical loading, uh, there is the interaction between the mechanical loading but, uh, uh, with PTH and mechanical loading, but even on the PTH group, the mechanical loading still inhibit the bone resorption on the preostium surface. Uh, but on the other hand, and they're very smart in mouse, not in human per se, in undastial and the results are opposite. You can see the resorbed bone volume on the mechanical loading in the no PTH group are significant, you know, are increased. In this particular case, it's not significant yet, but it is a trend increase on the mechanical loading. But in the PTH group, we can see the long loaded with the, with the loaded that actually are significantly increased for mechanical loading here. So therefore, the mechanical loading in the undastial surface actually enhance the resorptions. And if we know, we can talk about it, you know, what means mechanics because of the thin cortex of the mouse bone, that's actually is mechanically is, uh, is uh, beneficial, right? So we're gonna summarize, you know, increase the antibody modeling and remodeling response to bone mass means we found mechanical loading. And uh, I think the increase in the preocious surface, uh, particularly, uh, you know, we didn't talk about the results, but actually targeting high compressed strain area and uh, those are very important. Uh, you know, the uh, catabolic one is uh, suppressed in the periostium surface, but it increases the endothelial surface. So that's the key takeaway here. So let's go back to this modeling and remodeling ones here, right? And then as we said, you know, it's related to osteo class and also pre osteo class, right? So those are, those are very important. So from those information, so we wanted to actually look at the uh, uh, source you know, squats the independent pathway. So we want to look at a little bit of uh, where the OSI class come from, right? So one of them, of course, Rankel, I say, is really a major uh, uh, factor to stimulating multi-nucleate OSI class, right? So therefore, and then for this one, and then as I said, we're using OPG uh, as a decoy to actually uh, stop this differentiation. So don't have, look at that one. And then, there is even if one look at early ones before from the macrophages, you can also target in the C, uh, MCSF uh, receptors. And then those ones, if you're blocking them, that it will not from macrophages into a even pre class. So that's the two ones here. So one of them is called a mafia mouse. Okay, so that's a macrophage fast induced apoptosis. So if you're giving them a particularly in this transgenic mouse, if you're giving them injection of a, a substance, and then you actually going to kill all the macrophages in here, right? So that's the two models we uh, used uh, in our um, studies. So this is a, a look at this um, genetic modified uh, mouse model. So this is a Scrosten positive, which is a wild type, and the hydrozygous, and also the Scrosten lockout. You can see certainly the effect of how much squastum you know is in, in, in uh, impact on the on the bone mass in here so therefore we're going to focus on the squastum wild type and the squastum lockout and the first one we did is uh, as i said you know we the wild type and squastum locks out we also treat them with opg okay and then the opg as i said is rank uh is a rank uh, an antagonist and then you can see the OBG actually is quite uh, powerful. You can see in here, you see a uh, red in here, that's identified resorption. And if you give them OBG, so it pretty much shut down most of the resorption here. Same thing for the Scrotton lockout uh, mouse. And then interesting, as you can see here, the Scrotton lockout mouse actually have a little baseline, have a little bit high resorption baselines here. 
and that those are really uh, significant, quite significantly reduced uh, when we give them up, uh, enough OPG injection here, right? And different one model is a, a macrophage um, uh, the uh, depletion models, and then if we give this uh, injection of uh, AP two zero one eight seven, and then you activate in uh, the macrophage kill, and then it's pretty dramatic, and then you kill the macrophages, and then actually create the bones actually losing losing a lot of bones in here. And this is squats and lock out of mouse, and then you give them the injection also affecting. So the, the baseline also is quite complex. It's not just affecting the, you know, the um, oxygen class, but also somehow also have some bone loss in, induced in here as well. So let's look at some results, right? So I'm gonna walk you through here is the result, because our hypothesis is, if you blocking, if you don't have squatting and also don't block in the full resorption pathway, and they should not respond to mechanical loading at all, because you know you blocking the anabolic uh, process of squatting, but also the pre ossicles or ossicles of the modeling pathways in here. So let's look at them. So first, we look at the results here. It's trabecular anabolic modeling. Okay, and then as shown here, as repeated over before, you can see in the wild type you see the mechanical loading increase significantly the form the bone volume, right, in here. And then even in the, uh, if you give it the OPGs, okay, and then if you give OPG shut down the OC class, and then they still have a significant importance because it means both of them actually have to be important in there. And then if you look at here, in my arrows in here, and then squats and lockout mouse, if I mechanical load them, and then you actually induce significant uh, antibody modeling. So therefore means, if you don't have squatting, they can still respond to mechanical loading. However, in those mouse, if you give them injections of um, OPGs, shut down the resorption part, and then you actually absolutely do not have any response. Okay, so therefore proving our hypothesis is correct. And then if you look at the endosteal surface, and the results are very, very similar. Okay, so you can, in this case, in the wild type, the uh, mechanical loading induced significant antibiotic and dosteal uh, antibiotic response. And then this is particular uh, experiment in the square knockout. You show the trends, but not significantly different. But in these uh, uh, OPGs, if you give them injection OPGs, uh, they are not there. So therefore, seems in trabecular bone as well as uh, uh, the endosteal surface, we actually are in the right track. But this is a surprise. In the preostium, okay, this is the result preostium. You can see in the wild type, you have robust response by mechanical loading, okay? And then if you give them an OPGs, inhibited osteo class, the response is there. And then it's still trypidomatic. And then if you look at os the squats and lock out, and then they don't have squats then. If, as I mentioned before, they still have response to mechanical loading, you can see here. And if you inhibit uh, rank L uh, by OBGs, and then this one is still there. So we are very disappointed. Uh, our hypothesis is uh, valid in two thirds of the bone compartment, but not the, the pre -austin. But on the other hand, it's also interesting as well. And if you look at the catabolic modeling, I think the results are similar. So that's where in you know, the bone resorption as well, of course, not too much surprising here. And in trabecular bone, if you inhibit in the both screw lockout as well as wild type, you inhibit resorption, you're going to significantly you know, abolish in the catabolic modeling, which is resorption here. But also interesting in the endosteal surface, that as I mentioned before, in the endosteal surface, resorbed bone, actually you increase the amount of bone uh, loss by mechanical loading. And then inhibiting uh, osteoclast, you're going to abolish in that response, which is not so surprising. And the same thing for squats and lockout mouse. So therefore, in the uh, trabecular compartment and dosteal compartment, you know, that seems like a, a source and uh, uh, OBG or rank L is really controlled the uh, ones here. But uh, same thing, even in the catabolic one, it's quite, I think this is quite interesting. It's pre I say, mechanical loading suppressed bone formation, and that one persisted in the OPG treatment once here. In both 
to squat them, squat on the wide type as well as squats on lockout mass. You can see here. So both of the on the body response is uh, uh, there in terms of mechanical loading and also the catabolic the bone resorption, the mechanical load dependent on bone resorption is also totally intact. It's uh, really uh, fascinating here. And look at the water one by the microphage ablation. I think we pretty much see the similar results. And you see here because of the different loading experiment in this wild type was limited to getting more data. Did not show mechanical loading effects in here, but uh, also the treated one ablating osteo, uh, the microphages, and then you abolishing all the mechanical response here. And you see the squares on lockout mouse, and then you see there is an increase of uh, you know, the mechanical loading. And if you ablate the OC class, that one is all gone. Okay, it's all gone here. And then same thing for the endosteal surface. You can see the endosteal surface, the trends of increased mechanical loading here. And then that one is abolished if you uh, delete all the macrophages. And uh, and then in the source of lockout in here, that in, uh, in this particular mouse, uh, the experiments where you have a little bit of reducing of a uh, bone formation in, in here. Okay. And then we reduced one here. And But anyway, if you apply in the macrophages, they're all gone. And if you get rid of the macrophages uh, in the preostium surface, and then the things it's a completely like it just doesn't really care at all. So you can see whether you have sauce or without sauce, or you have a macrophage ablation positive, and then the response almost just mirror each other. So it's a disappointing, but also very fascinating. That's really the active work we're working on now is really to try to understand what is so special in the mechanical loading in, in the pre uh, surface in here. Okay. All right, and look at the catabolic modeling. The results is, uh, I think, is uh, similar. I think, you know, it's, uh, look at the, the treated group, there's no mechanical response in the tubercular bone compartment. And then the, in the squats and lockout uh, group, you can see there was an increase uh, to the mechanical loading and they abolished it here. And in on uh the result is still preliminary and uh, uh, the increase, at least the increase in the response to the uh, resorption of the mechanical loading is uh, somehow is reversed in the, 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 in the macrophage uh, ablation uh, models. Okay, follow it here. Right, but if you lock out the uh, lock out the squaston and also macrophages, and then there's no more mechanical response here. But if you look at the preostium, as I say, there is suppression of mechanical loading. Those results is very clean, very consistent. You can see here the mechanical effects into resorption is uh, still there. So uh, that's the uh, stat, you know, up, updates, and I went through a lot of data, went through. Uh, pretty quickly, is um, I think OBG drives kind of body modeling to a minimal. Uh, oh. Really, probably sometimes a mask or shadow effect uh, loading there, a loading induced uh, remodeling. And uh, through the intervention uh, to simultaneously minimize squats and maximize OBG rank ratio, we neutralize the effects of loading through the anabolic modeling on both tobacco bone and endosteal bone surface. And however, the preostium surface and the body modeling as well as tight body modeling, the bone resorption maintain the uh, significant effects of loading irregardless of really uh, either a treatment or uh, you know, the genotype. So that's a really a fascinating uh, results we, uh, we're receiving. So that's actually the currently we're working very hard on that one now. Uh, for this, I need to thank in the funding source as well mm -hmm. as uh, supporting here. So Sam uh, Robinson spent uh, a lot of time uh, with uh, with those mouse. Uh, there's a lot of uh, learning experience where hopefully can pass him by to our next generation graduate student. And then Jenny is uh, a other student, a fantastic student working in the lab, working in the, uh, the osteoarthritis area. And she helped us on the image analysis and how to, you know, to do the answer here. So we did not, I thought I don't have enough time talking about the 
uh, some of the also interesting results on the trabeculate component when you're loading, uh, loading a trabeculate bone, what type of uh, uh, trabecular actually will gain on the mechanical loading. That's also a fascinating results as well. But uh, I went through pretty quickly. And, uh, but I think uh, more, that's why I called my talk is in, uh, new insights in modeling and the remodeling to mechanical loading because the, we solve half of the problem. Uh, leave the other half of the problem at least uh, have no clue uh, <laughs> what is uh, what is going on. But that's uh, making the research also exciting. So I'm looking forward to uh, today all the uh, uh, experts in the in the audience probably can give us some insight how to proceed in here. So I will stop here, and uh, and then more than happy to answer questions you may have. And uh, I said I go back to uh, this okay. size. Okay. Uh, probably I, I do the combo, you know, this is a joint uh, ICMS and uh, also YCOB webinar series. So YCOB is a World Association of Chinese Bioengineer. Uh, so in September 19th, we're going to have uh, another seminar in the YCOB. And uh, it's going to be presented by, I think it will be very interesting to me, it's going to be responding to unexpected, develop a COVID-19 rapid test by Zheng uh, Sui uh, from uh, University of Oxford. So it's September 19th, it's 10 a.m. New York, uh, 3 p.m. London, 4 p.m. Europe, and 10 uh, p.m. in Beijing. So hopefully we can see you next month. And then I said, I'm really looking forward to have some discussions with uh, colleagues uh, in, the, in the audience. Yeah, thanks for, for your listening. Okay, thank you very much for fascinating presentation. And uh, uh, I think it's uh, before I just uh, uh, clarify some uh, logistic issue here. So if you have a question, you can have two ways to, to, to ask. The first way you can write in your chat. I think there's a small icon over there you can uh, uh, it's called chat and then you can type in whatever, whatever question you have and i'm going to read the question to uh, dr Guo for him uh, to answer the second way to do it is uh, using the uh, uh, another function is called uh, the raise hand i think there's a raise hand uh, uh, icon over there you can click that and i can see you and i saw that i can just kind of relieve we kind of uh, uh, unmute you and so that you can directly ask questions. So either way, it's okay. So I think I just start, uh, because I have several questions right now in the chat channel, and uh, I'm gonna go through the chat first, and then if you uh, prepare a question, if you have any question, you can just raise your hand. Okay, so the first question here is that the, which brand of the in vivo loading machine is used in your lab? <laughs> it's, oh Jesus, I have no uh, financial uh, connections uh, with the company, it's uh, both, it's both. Yeah. I think they sold to a different company now, actually, I, we bought it, it still belongs to both, which is the, the sold to the, <laughs> sold to the earphones, and I think they sold to some other companies now. But I'm happy to provide you information about that loading, loading device. Okay. So, and then the second question here is that, uh, uh, which species uh, of mice are used in this study? It's uh, the regular C50 uh, black, C57 and, uh, and you know, B1 black. Yeah. Oh yeah, the black six, right? Black yeah, six. black six, yeah, yeah, C57. Okay. Yeah, so, I think there's a lot of compliment here. It's a great talk, everything, okay? And then there's another question here. Uh, there's a comment here, so all the comments or the question here. This says uh, from from uh, uh, Joe Hong. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Our experience was OPG doesn't block osteoclasts on periosteal surface. Is this uh, ex explain some of your results? Uh, I think so, but uh, you know we um, we. Probably it's not really a, uh, you know, because that's why we did the uh, mafia mouse. So mafia mouse is not a, a osteoclast, it's actually an ablation of macrophages. 
and the results are exactly the same. So we believe, you know, probably it's not because they do not block in the macrophages. And I think there's a couple of things we're looking at now. One is maybe the ostracides are different in the preostium, and the other one is maybe the uh, hemopriotic lineage of those uh, uh, osteo class macrophages actually are different from the outside preostium to the one in the endosteal and uh, tubercular bone compartment. Yeah. Yeah, but we are, as I said, you know, there's so many experiments to do. So we are in the process one to do the one we uh, locking out the uh, rank L in osteocytes. Uh, you know, that, that experiment is still growing. So we stopped by the COVID-19. So we have the mouse and then we have to uh, sacrifice the mouse. So we need to grow them up now. Okay, so and then uh, uh, there are several uh, questions. Uh, the compliments, basically. Great talk, a lot of information, and very, very interesting. And then uh, another question or comments, and then question from uh, Yixian. And uh, it is uh, perhaps a difference between uh, periosteum, uh, periosteum and uh, endosteum is that the uh, periosteum has strong blood regulation or and nerve activation. Perhaps that's uh, the main reason. I think that's uh, a common, yeah common. yeah you should good to uh, good to have you thanks for coming yeah that's could be true I mean it's uh, it's wider open I don't know whether uh, Xu Chao is in the audience or not but uh, I think you know his work identify those pre osteo class as well as the uh, you know related to the nerve as well right so so therefore I think the nerve distribution as an is definitely different yeah there could be. I mean, you could be right, I mean, the outside could be just completely from the nerve. You know, exactly bone formation is a govern the total different from the inside. Okay, so and then another question here. Uh, how to consider the relationship between the inflammatory factors and the injury? Uh, that will be uh, quite uh, important. Uh, but uh, quite honestly, we're still, I mean, the Sam just finished those experiments and then he's, he's gone in Seattle. I, I saw the Sam in here, but I don't know whether that's the same Sam or not. Um, so therefore, we have to look in carefully. I think uh, the, uh, in the wild type, as well as squats and lockout, we're pretty confident that we do not endure any injury. So therefore, uh, uh, I, I don't know whether the information is very important. But those mafia mouse, you can see some of the results actually is uh, still kind of all over the place. Uh, I think they, they probably have something we have to re repeat some experiment because the loss of bones in the mafia mouse is uh, quite uh, severe. Okay, so the next question here is uh, from uh, David Key. Hey, David. <laughs> yeah, and is that uh, the loading doses on different bone surfaces may contribute to the different response. Is that right? Uh, not completely. So therefore, because when you load the tibia, you bend the tibia. So when you bend the tibia, so there are high compressed stress in the periosteum surface, but also there's a high compressed stress in the endosteal surface. So mechanical loading, it is an explained part of them, but not complete of them. Right, because of the uh, the results just like there are two dramatic differences between the inside and outside. Yeah, David, congratulations, your adventure in China. Yeah, probably he, he can hear you, but he cannot. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> he can, so he cannot I think uh, uh, David, if you want to talk, you can raise your hand, and I can let you in. Okay, so we have another question here. Is that uh, uh, from Lin Chen? And uh, the question is, uh, periosteum has more stem cells, yeah. which is important for this response, and uh, yeah. uh, is it? So we, we have uh, two Lin Qin in our society. i uh, guessing this Lin Qin, I'm just guessing, is from Yupan. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, that's, um, uh, that's uh, we're, we're working with the collaborators to look at the stem cell difference. Could be also the stem cell difference. Well, you know, my sense is, but well, the, the difference is so dramatic, right? It's just like it doesn't care. Whatever the interventions you have, 
I think it the, could be the stem cell, uh, but I think the size and those osteo class linear, it will be, I will bet in more in this tool. That's what we're looking at right now. We're doing some EMS chemistry to try to, you know, working with the Hongzhou to, uh, to try to identify really what's the difference between the pre and and osteo under the mechanical loading. Yeah, but that's a good question. It's definitely, we cannot rule that one up. Yeah, I think there are some uh, question here on how to raise a hand. I think uh, I th you can see that uh, on, the, on the bottom you have the kind of menu bar and then there's called the reactions. And then if you click that and you're going to have two signs are coming out. One is raise hand and another one is, uh, is a praise as a, a compliment a sign basically. So uh, I think it's, this is a David is asking this question. Uh, probably can ha you can, now you can use that, right? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to go, uh, continue the question here. Uh, okay, so let me uh, scroll down a little bit. And uh, okay, so here, oh, this is, okay. So, and then uh, the question here is, uh, the study, the in vivo skeleton response similar to uh, lipus, which is clinically, available. I, I think it's a, that's just, I, I'm reading the question. Probably you, 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 you got a question, uh, Ed? Lip, lipus? What's a lipus? L-I-P-U-S. Yeah. Uh, lepers, lepers. Huh. That's, that's the inflammation, right? That's an autoimmune disease. So, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, that's out of my specialty. Mm -hmm. Loopers, right? Loopers. Yeah. Okay, so uh, here is a, it's a little bit long question here. It's from uh, uh, Bin Li. Li Bin? Yeah, Li Bin, okay. Bin, yeah. Hi. So, <laughs> and uh, the question here is that the, the dear Ed, uh, thanks for the fantastic work. One question regarding the image restoration for the in vivo scans. During the observation window, at least four weeks, the bone is still growing. Uh, LinkedIn getting bigger. How did you eliminate the growing effect to precisely position the individual regions of bone so you can identify bone formation and absorption? So, the, you know, the, the growing effect probably is there. Uh, at least in cortical bone, they're probably growing outside as well. So, therefore, uh, the difference, what we, uh, you know, whatever identify bone formation, bone absorption, we subtract the values from the unloaded limb. So therefore, we'll, what we're looking at is that. And then on the other hand, in the tuberculative compartment, actually, they'll keep losing bones. So therefore, we actually uh, only adding slow down the loss of the tuberculative compartment. So if you look at the first curve I showed, uh, in four months uh, old, the mice are already lost in bones in the tuberculative compartment. Yes, I think That's this is kind of uh, gave you the, uh, uh, <clears throat> interpretation of that's kind of aberration of lips, lips. I think actually it's a low intensity pulse ultrasound ah, okay. stimulation, I think. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's a, that's a Yi Xian's yeah. favor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is Yi Xian's and uh, the Li Qin's are uh, kind of yeah. brought it up. Yeah. Uh, sorry that I, 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 did, I didn't get it. Okay. So I don't know. So I think that'd be uh, wonderful to, uh, you know, we uh, love to working with you as well to, uh, with your mice or rats, uh, actually definitely can see whether the ultrasound, low frequency ultrasound uh, can also have the same effect in, in the uh, pre -austin. Probably do, probably do. Okay, so another question here is Tu Chao. And, uh, and his question is, uh, did you look at uh, more evidences, uh, evidence regarding the, the modeling and the remodeling process, uh, processes doing unloading in addition to mechanical loading. Yeah, so that's, uh, we have the protocol approved. So uh, we only have SAM, so uh, I need more money to uh, <laughs> have more students to, to do. Yeah, yeah, we have protocol approved, but I haven't done that one yet. But definitely that's in our mind, you know, you want to do uh, mechanical loading as well as unloading as well, yeah. Uh, so, and then uh, uh, the Chao Wan, Wan Chao, yeah. Uh, this question coming from him. 
And uh, uh, it's a thanks for the very in informative talk, uh, Dr. Guo, how to define catabolic modeling. Yeah, so once I good, good to hear from you and I hope uh, you are okay in Hong Kong. Uh, so the, uh, you mean anabolic modeling or catabolic modeling? Uh, catabolic. Catabolic. So catabolic modeling, so it's just that when you have two bones images and you compare with them, and then the second week, if that area is lost the bone, right? So you end up with lost bone. Then you have the third week, and in general, if you have bone formation, called remodeling, that you're going to add in bone there. But if you, the bone is lost, resolved, but not come back, then that's why it's calculated as a catabolic model. Because, so therefore, you always need three weeks. So the trick for catabolic modeling and then also the remodeling is, and as well as anabolic modeling, is three weeks. So with the three weeks, actually, can separate these two mechanisms, the several epic mechanisms. Okay. So, and then, uh, thanks. And another question here is from uh, Weibo Zhou. And uh, the question is, uh, mechanical loading may affect different bone matrix in different ways. How you comment on modeling? And uh, I think it's not complete, and uh, dynamic uh, measuring, okay. Oh, I think it's a probably, the question is not completed, but uh, I think it's a probably, I can just guess as a mechanical loading, uh, does mechanical loading affect the different bone matrix, mat matrices in the, in the different ways? How you comment on the, the Yeah, mode? so prob probably was talking about the reason mode of the loading, right? Probably the mode of loading. Uh, because you know they not changing matrix uh, instantaneously those loading per se because we are loading you know as I said you know we're loading in the physiological level not creating any damage so we're not changing the tissue but oh. you probably were asking about the mold right so uh, so that's a, a huge amount of uh, computation we are begin to do right now I think shall do actually you you're the expert so we're actually trying to use machine learning to analyze the data because you can see we have uh, so many bone formation, you know, bone resorption, remodeling on different surfaces, different types. So that's what I, we explore in the machine learning to draw those uh, correlations now. Okay, so I think there's a, uh, 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 Wang Chao has kind of uh, added one thing here is uh, the dynamic measuring. So basically what, what he, he meant is, uh, is dynamic measuring. So how you dynamically measure that? So I think that's... Uh, oh, the well, the the whole thing about this uh, micro CT uh, dynamics tomography is you do repeated uh, CT scans, so that's where you're able to figure out the bone formation dynamics. So okay. by weekly persons, yeah. Uh, okay, so here there's a uh, the good uh, compliment here. So this is best talk ever for in modeling and remodeling. I think this is a good compliment. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and uh, another question here is from uh, Lin Chen too, uh, is will osteoclasts sense and response uh, mechanic loading directly? Yeah, I mean osteoclasts? Yeah, yeah osteoclasts, yeah. Yeah, they do, but we just don't know what they do in vivo, right? So I think you know, there'll be uh, interesting experiments how to, uh, I mean, those kind of experiments are always uh, uh, interesting and uh, yeah, so, you know, they probably do, they probably do, but yeah, I, don't so know, I, think, I don't know how to separate them, yeah. Sorry. So I'm trying to find out who is raising the hand, I'm probably, uh, uh, let me see here. Yeah, maybe uh, on on uh, stop sharing. Then I can I can also help you with uh, share the hand, raise the hand. I think it's in participant. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, usually if you raise your hand, and then I can see you uh, uh, with a sign. Uh, 
from your your video part, and I can just kind of uh, uh, handle that. So I don't think anybody raised their hand or do the. Yes, a, I think it's a, I'm trying to uh, see if anybody is raising your hand. Hey, hello, Professor Ko. Hey. Uh, it's me. I raised my hand. As okay, no okay. Yeah, because there is oh. no response, so I lowered my hand. Okay. okay. Uh, very good talk, and thanks for broadening our horizon in Boeing microbiology. I ha actually have two questions. The first one is that uh, it seems that you applied only a single form of sine wave loading yeah. uh, to uh, the Boeing. Yeah. So have you ever tried various loading scenarios, especially for, the, for, for varying the loading frequency and amplitudes? And the second question is that um, um, you reported the significant differences in anabolic and catabolic responses in modeling process, right? Yeah. But uh, it seems that you did not mention the remodeling process. Yeah. So how do you see that? Uh, have you ever investigated that in remodeling process? Uh, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great question. I think the yeah, there's many things to do. I think certainly uh, we can look at the different uh, loading frequency and amplitude as well. Uh, so that could be the future work. And then the, in the beginning of the talk, I also reported the remodeling response as well. Uh, but in both trabeculate bone as well as uh, uh, cortical bone response, the remodeling portion in response to mechanical loading is uh, much smaller compared to the um, uh, anabolic modeling and the catabolic modeling. That's why I reported those results first. So there are some changes there as well, especially in different models. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So now we can see the hand now. And then, uh, I think David said he, uh, he raised the hand. Hey, yeah, can you hear me? Oh yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah. Hey, okay. David. <laughs> good to see you, very nice talk, very, very good talks. Oh, thank, thank you. you. You know the story we're working on, so we did not solve yeah. the problem. <laughs> yes. One thing I just want to remind you and see if that has anything to do with your data is, yeah. in general speaking, in that age of animal, yeah. The pre is more modern based, either formation of, or of only substance. Why the endocortical is a mix, and trabecular are the mix of modern and demodering going on. Yeah. So yeah. that might contribute yeah. some of the uh, discrepancy between the pre and your endocortical yeah. with this amount, for instance. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I agree. I think the, the, in the pre surface, the limited re remodeling going on. Yeah. They have a resolution, though. Yes, they yeah. do have this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, I mean, it's very good to focus on a different surface. I think that's what we need to know in the next stage of our field, actually, on yeah. different surfaces. Yeah, that, that, uh, <laughs> you, you know the story. I was beginning to work on that many years ago. You can look at how to can separate the modern and remodeling, right? So mm -hmm. when the results come out, and then you're just not controlled by <laughs> it seems like they don't care whether they have sauce or one, anything. You kill the macrophages, come out. I said, I, I thought you would kill macrophages, then everything's more in line. But then, no, that is the same. But I also make it fascinating as well. Very good, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hope to see you sometime. You know, I miss my travels. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll leave some time for some, some other people. They may have a lot, some questions, I guess. Okay, okay, thank you. So, Xiaodu, you can continue to... Okay, so I'm just... Uh, uh, now, in the chat, I have another question here. It's from Xiao Weibo. It's yeah. uh, the, the how to measure the level of mineralization of bone by... Uh, a high resolution P PQCT. Hey, hey uh, nice to uh, nice to hear from you. Uh, yeah, we do the exact same thing, you know, just different resolutions, and they may not be as accurate as the micro CT, but actually, we do the exact same thing. Some somebody, yeah.
ہے ایکسٹینڈلی ہسٹولوجی We want to do a lot of histology to uh, definitely look at the more biology, yeah. Mm. I, I think that's Yang Wan Tin, yeah, from Braun. Yeah, good to see yeah. you. 